We are constantly being told how to improve our lives. Every day we are bombarded by health claims. How to get fit, slim down, look young. But all too often that advice can be confusing. Contradictory. So how do you know what's best for you? I'm Michael Mosley. In this series, I'm joined by a team of doctors. And together, we're going to use our expertise to cut through confusing adverts, headlines, and health claims. This is Trust Me, I'm a Doctor. This time, we're in Chester, running an experiment to test the remarkable claim that simply standing up can transform your health. Also, are vitamin pills just money down the loo? And I'll be asking the experts, should I be taking statins? What do you say? Could antibiotics be a novel way to cure back pain? And does getting cold help you catch one? Can we ask you about vitamins? Vitamins! First up, Dr. Chris Van Tulliken. Guys, can we talk to you about yes. vitamins? Just two minutes. Asking whether vitamin supplements will give you a health boost. You guys don't take vitamins? I did. Did you? What did you take? I took um, folic acid and other bits and bobs because I've just had it. Oh, so this is yours? Yes. There's probably no health message more firmly placed in our minds than that vitamins are good for you. I take garlic pearls. Garlic pearls. Oh, yes, yeah. garlic pearls. Good. Is that a thing? I've never heard of garlic pearls. Oh, they're not. <laughs> oh, they're very good. Who takes vitamin supplements? I do. do you? We, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've done them, but not. Oh, I've done them. Not done I've them. Done you've them. quit. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you take the vitamin B? For my nervous system. Oh, that's interesting. Does it help? Do you feel I less. I don't know. <laughs> 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 Guys, <laughs> so, if vitamins are good, surely more in the form of supplements would be even better. As a nation, we spend three quarters of a billion pounds a year on vitamin supplements. And no matter who you are or what you're worried about, there's a pill for you. We've got pills for teenagers, pills for women, for men, and pills for different parts of your body. We've got here for vision and eye health, skin, hair and nails, and pills for your heart. Now, vitamins and some minerals are genuinely vital to our bodies. But the key question is, does taking them in supplement pills do us any good? I'm going to do a little experiment on myself to find out. We normally get our vitamins from our diet, so my first step is to fess up to everything I've eaten and drunk over the past week. I started with breakfast, and I eat good breakfast here. You know, I've got porridge oats and wheat a bit, so I'll lay them out. I'm pretty good for lunch. <clears throat> Usually have tomatoes. I get a salad, chicken baguette of some sort. So far, so good. But then I remembered more. Obviously, I drank some booze. And added it up. And I only remember one bottle of beer at first. And then, of course, there was a bottle of wine. And then, of course, there were two more bottles of beer. Oh, yeah. And then there was also four tins of Guinness, two packets of Haribo, a pack of nuts, mid-morning chocolate bar, Tea every morning, a packet of crisps, and of course, the obligatory two burgers and chips had in the wee hours of Saturday morning. It's hardly what you'd call a virtuous diet, but like with most people's diets, it's surprising how many vitamins are actually hidden in there. Starting the day with the breakfast cereals, fortified with B vitamins. right the way through to the late night crisps and fries, which, when fried quickly, actually preserves the high levels of vitamin C in potatoes. So, I'm a normal person eating a pretty normal diet. So if I were to take a supplement, would it in fact do me any good? Well, I'm going to take one and find out. The pill I've taken is a typical multivitamin, containing high doses of most of the vitamins, especially vitamin C, which is the most popular single vitamin supplement sold. 
As a nation, we take about 600 million tablets of pure vitamin C every year, and a lot more in multivitamins. To see if it's doing me any good, I took a sample of my blood from before the pill to measure the amount of vitamin C in my body from my diet. Now, to see what happens to the supplement I've taken, I'm collecting all my urine for 24 hours as a lovely present for a team here at the University of East Anglia, led by Professor Bill Fraser. Bill, 24 hours of pee. That's a lot. Oh, is, it, is it a lot? It felt like close, a lot. It's close on four litres there, I would imagine. I never realised I peed so much every day. Right now I've produced so much urine that it wouldn't fit on the urine measuring scales. I don't know how to feel about that. Slightly proud, maybe a little bit ashamed as well. Bill's team get to work analysing my body fluids. They start with the vitamin levels in my blood before I took the pill. This will reveal how much vitamin C I was getting just from my normal food and drink. So Bill, have I got scurvy? No, you've not got scurvy. <laughs> That's a relief. I didn't think I had. Well, I'm pleased to say that you're not vitamin C deficient. So, before I even took the pill, my normal diet was providing me with all the vitamin C my body needed. But what happened when I tried to top it up with a supplement? How much of the vitamin in the pill would remain in my body and how much would pass straight through? From the tablet, we extracted about 425 milligrams. Your urine contained over 530 uh, milligrams of, of vitamin C, so you've passed the tablet and a little bit more, which is probably what you've taken in in your diet. Basically, my body was full of as much vitamin C as it can hold, and anything else I put in, I just pee out. You've peed it out. The majority of it's been peed out. Yeah. It's 